last week of school. It went by so fast. I know how much you've enjoyed learning all your new math skills, multiplication, division. Today, or this week in, in math, we are going to read a book called The Math Curse. Da, da, da. And it's going to go with your activities starting tomorrow. So we'll start off. So we're going to read The Math Curse, and then I'll go through your directions for your multiplication mystery, even though you prob probably know how to do that already. You've done a few of them this year. So this book is called The Math Curse. Da, da, da. We're only going to read half of it today. On Monday in math class, Mr. Fibonacci says, you know, you can think of almost anything as a math problem. On Tuesday, I start having problems. And you can think of um, math problems for just about anything. I wake up at 7.15. It's just, a, now listen to the math. It takes me 10 minutes to get dressed, 15 minutes to eat my breakfast, and one minute to brush my teeth. Suddenly, it's a problem. If my bus leaves at eight o'clock, will I make it on time? How many minutes in one hour? How many teeth in one mouth? Everything is a math problem. I look in my closet and the problems got, get worse. I have one white shirt, three blue shirts, three striped shirts, and that one ugly plaid t-shirt that my uncle Zeno sent me. How many shirts is that all together? How many shirts would I have if I threw away that awful plaid shirt? When will Uncle Zeno quit sending me such ugly shirts? I'm getting a little worried. Everything seems to be a problem. I take out the milk for my cereal and wonder how many pints in a quart? How many quarts in a gallon? How many inches in a foot? How many feet in a yard? How many yards in the neighborhood? How many inches in a pint? How many feet in my shoes? I don't even bother to take out the cereal. I don't wanna know how many flakes in a bowl. Mr. Fibonacci has obviously put a math curse on me. Everything I look at or think about has become a math problem. It's true. You can do that too. Whoa, a lot going on here. The whole morning is one problem after another. There are 24 kids in my class. I just know someone is going to be bringing in cupcakes to share. We sit in four rows with six desks in each row. Four times six is 24. What if Mr. Fibonacci rearranges the desks to make six rows? Eight rows, three rows, two rows? I count the 24 kids in our class, our class again, this time by twos. Jake scratches his paper with one finger. How many fingers are in our class? Casey pulls Eric's ear. How many ears are in our class? The new girl, Kelly, sticks out her tongue at him. How many tongues in her class? I'm about to really lose it when the lunch bell rings. Whoa, that's a lot going on in that student's head, right? All these math problems swirling around. And you could do that too. Oh, uh-oh. Unfortunately for me, lunch is pizza and apple pie. Each pizza is cut into eight equal slices. Each pie is cut into six equal slices. If I want two slices of pizza, should I ask for one eighth, two eighths, two slices of pizza? What is another way to say one half of an apple pie? Two sixths, three sixths? I don't know what that says. It looks like it's in French. So I'm not gonna try to pronounce it and mess it up. What tastes greater? One half a pizza, one half an apple pie. We haven't studied fractions yet, so I take 12 carrot sticks at three at a time and then eat them two at a time. Uh-oh, there's that apple pie. In the afternoon, every subject is a problem. Social studies is geography problem. The Mississippi River is about 4,000 kilometers long and M&M is about one centimeter long. There are 1,000 centimeters in a meter and 1,000 meters in a kilometer. One, estimate how many M&Ms it would take to measure the length of the Mississippi River. Estimate how many M&Ms you would eat if you had to measure the Mississippi River with M&Ms. Bonus, can you spell Mississippi without any M&Ms? <laughs> English is a problem, is a word problem. 
if mail plus box equals mailbox, does lipstick minus stick equal lip? Does tuna fish plus tuna fish equal horna fish? <laughs> Biz ed, that's like PE, is a sports problem. In 1919, Babe Ruth hit 29 home runs, batted 0.322, and made $40,000. In 1991, the average Major League Baseball player hit 15 home runs, batted 0.275, and made $840,000. Circle the correct answer. Babe Ruth <clears throat> makes less than the average modern ba baseball player. Babe Ruth makes more or greater than the average baseball player. Babe Ruth makes the equal amount. Everything is a math problem. In art, we finally get to relax with the connect with a connect the dot picture. Here is my picture. Too bad it turns out to be a connect the ancient Mayan numerals picture. Okay, we're gonna stop there, and tomorrow you are going to hear the rest of the math curse by the teacher. And then we're gonna have an activity for it. You'll enjoy it. So I'll run through these directions quickly because I'm pretty sure you know how to do that. Now, if you'll notice the top half and the bottom half are the same. So you only have to do one, okay? It just printed twice on one page. So you would solve the problems. I'm just gonna do one because you need to do your own multiplication. Nine times four is... 36, and you'll solve the rest of them. And then I would solve all the problems first and then go back and color crayon marker, colored pencil, don't care. So any box that has 36, I'm going to color yellow. Where is a 36? Here's one. Here's another one. So you can color as you go, or you can solve all the problems and then color last, whichever works for you. We solve them all. These three answers get yellow. These three answers get brown. These answers get light blue. These two answers get dark green. And these three answers get light green. And your job after that is to post what your mystery picture is. Tomorrow we will, let's see. Tomorrow, did I just, tomorrow, sorry, we will um, finish the math curse and get started on your little end of the year math curse project. See you tomorrow.